Hey everybody, it's Jamie Shaw, and welcome to the Jamie Shaw Marketing Show. I'm here with my good friend, Wonderwit. For those of you who don't know her, she comes on and hangs out with me the first of every month. And uh, say hi, Wit. And <laughs> hey guys, thanks for joining me and Jamie. Very excited for tonight. I love coming on and hanging out with Jamie. The first of the month is one of my favorite days. So I like coming on here and bantering with Jamie. He's, he's got good... We've got good banter going back and forth, so it's always fun for me. Oh, yeah. You got the brains, and I got the IT skills. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have the techie brains. I have the, the people-y brains. <laughs> yep, exactly. You know, and that's what a lot of people don't think about when they're looking for, you know, partners or, I mean, you hear uh, accountability partners out there all the time. Well, we don't like that word accountability partner because nobody can hold you accountable, but except yourself. Exactly. And then with the accountability partner thing, it's, uh, it's usually a transfer of power where you expect somebody to step in and kind of be the monkey on your back. And that ends up being pretty detrimental for a lot of partners where one would do better than the other, or maybe you start resenting the other success or, Maybe you just start resenting them nagging you all the time. So um, it can be a very dangerous situation if you're not careful. But a business partner is definitely a very different thing. So Yeah, and as business partners, you know, like we said, we complement each other. She has the people skills. I have the tech skills. You know, and she's bringing me along with the people skills. You know, I'm getting there. You know, and I'm back into blogging this week. You know, I got three blog posts. Or two blog posts out, a third one getting ready to go out, and, it, and I just started blogging again yesterday. So, you know, it felt good to do a brain dump and start writing again. And uh, I don't know. I mean, it just felt it's like a weight lifted off my off my chest to get some of that stuff down on paper, you know, and then get it in words. So, yeah. See, I like the brain dump because when you finally do it, you have so much. You know, kind of like static. It's almost like the white noise on a TV just rolling around there, especially when you, you content binge like me. <laughs> I content binge all the time. So I have to just kind of like brain dump it where it's just you write down everything as much as you can get onto a piece of paper, and then you kind of like organize your thoughts, and you can categorize it, you can develop it, and it becomes so much easier. And that's when you get some really cool content because especially if you're the content junkie like me, where I, I binge on this content for so long and so many different sources, you know, different influencers and mentors and I go through their content. And so it all kind of accumulates and then you've got all this different flavor and it's like a stew and you can spit it out and it's this awesome piece of content. So that's the fun thing about brain dumping for me. Yeah, I agree. I want to say hi to Maria. Maria's in the chat. Uh, I don't... Yeah. Does she have a question yet? Not yet. <laughs> sure she will. I love you, Maria. Because <laughs> <clears throat> tonight, what we're going to cover, you know, I'm kind of excited about this. Uh, we had asked me, I think it was uh, Sunday or Monday, you know, can I cover this? I'm like, yeah, sure. That, you know, and it was a deep abyss call that we heard, and she took what, she, you know, all the good stuff out of it, and she's going to make some content out of it, and she's going to teach us here tonight, and it's about emotional triggers and the things that make us do the things we don't understand why we do them. That's what it is. So uh, I'm going to mute up and I'm going to turn the floor over to Wit and let her take control and teach us about emotional triggers. Feel free to interject at any time too. I sent you the notes so that way you would feel free to go ahead and do that. But yeah, we're going to cover some emotional triggers. There's a lot of emotional triggers out there and the ones that I want to touch on tonight were, um, the, in my opinion, the most powerful. Um, there's undeniable emotional triggers that everybody has. Uh, and a lot of times you don't understand or recognize when you're being triggered. Or sometimes, like Jamie and I were discussing a little bit ago, we're, we're saying things that are triggering other people, but we didn't realize it. So to go through some of these was really cool, but I'm, I'm taking just a few and um, <laughs> I'm gonna go over these real, I, I wanna say that they're some of the most potent ones. Um, the ones, these are called self-actualization needs 
or um, they're almost like a, a purpose trigger. Now, these are the most powerful driving triggers in people, but especially entrepreneurs. So when you're out there in your in your marketing and your your discussing and your conversations, rapport building, um, these are some good ones to keep in mind. So these are deeply rooted. These are very very deeply rooted. They're so far back into your brain and into your heart. It's impossible not to feel the tug. Um, the the self actualization is is a it comes from a place where it's almost a, it's a need to fulfill purpose is what it is. So self actualization. These are the ones where your ego is tied. Now my my other partner Victoria and I were talking about ego um, last week. I believe it was last week, and it we get caught up in, in the term of ego being a negative thing and there is a negative ego, but the ego is actually a place where you derive your self confidence and your self esteem. And like I was saying, um, when Victoria and I covered it, it's, it's like a well. And if you poison the well, you get a really negative ego. So, um, these, let's go into these, some of these triggers. Let's talk about the need to satisfy the ego. Again, this is it's where you derive your self worth. So when you are unfulfilled or un unhappy in general, like you know, there, you you see it a lot where somebody's working a job that they don't necessarily like, and I, I'm not going to pick on nine to fives. I don't bash them at all. Um, but let's just say you have any job, whether you're an entrepreneur and in a um, you know affiliate marketing space that you're just not happy with a product you don't love whatever it is, you have something that you're doing that you're not in love with. It gets very very difficult to derive a fulfillment for your purpose because it's not what you love. So when you when you take that and you start questioning you know can I really do what I love or can I really um, make the impact that I want to make or there's a lot of different ways people gather their um, or sat satisfy their ego, whether it's helping other people. When you talk to a lot of entrepreneurs, they have usually have another motivation behind their business. So I know women who are out there, um, entrepreneurial women who are out there, and their real ambition is to empower other women or, um, you know, survivors domestic violence survivors who are out there trying to um, influence other people going through that situation to say, hey, you know what, you can step up, you can make it. And that's their message and their purpose. So to satisfy your ego is to pull your purpose and go with it. And that's that's where the positive ego comes in. Now, if you're not doing something that's fulfilling that purpose and satisfying the positive ego, you get into a negative ego where you're constantly questioning your self-worth because, oh, you, you got stuck with this job and maybe you're not good enough and maybe, you know, you just weren't meant for that awesome title or, you know, the, the house and kids and life that you really wanted or what have you. There's, there's all kinds of goals at the end of the day that people have and everybody defines success differently. But you start questioning that. So this trigger when you're talking about Let's let's just say you're talking about opportunity uh, as marketers. This is this is kind of how we um, apply it. When you're talking about on opportunity and you want somebody to realize that they can satisfy their ego with this, one thing I would like to say is, you know what? With this opportunity, when you do something that you love, when you start stepping into your purpose, you can finally say you did this or you did X or you made it here. There's, there's a sense of pride and accomplishment and fulfillment. And it's not wrong to pull on these emotional triggers. There, there is a delicate balance, but like, um, like, the, like the, uh, our mentor was saying when she was going over all this information is the motive behind it is what, what will make or break the ethics when you have a negative motivation and you're just worried about the cell and you're just trying to push somebody's button that's when you need to kind of reevaluate how many triggers you're pushing and how many you're pulling 
Um, but when your goal is to really help and you truly believe that this is the right path for somebody else and you can tell that they believe it too, push a button. For God's sake, push a button because you know what? They may not realize what they're about to miss. Um, I'm going to go into a different one that a lot of art artists feel. Now, there's a reason they're called starving artists, and it's because <laughs> there's not a lot of money to be made in art. And when there is, it takes a long time to get there. So, and I used to, I used to joke with my sister because we, we were pretty creative growing up. And when we buy supplies, you know, it costs a fortune. <laughs> we're like, is this why they're called starving artists? You spend your grocery money on paint, you know? <laughs> and it's true. But, <laughs> um, you know, as a, as a creative type, you know, you can come to see how an artist will take a nine to five or something that, to pay the bills, a job to pay the bills. And it stifles creativity. That's the emotional trigger. Express creativity. To be able to express creativity. There is so much black and white in the world. So many things that you can't really control beyond your space. Beyond your realm of being, there's not a lot you can control. So for an artist to go into a job that's just to pay bills and get funds and or, you know, a marketer for that matter. You know, you're going into, um, you know, the network marketing space and you realize that you do have to have an income to support your education and your tools and your resources. And it becomes stifling if you're not careful. So when you realize that you have this need to express creativity and break free from that black and white, you guys, these are ways to trigger yourself, too. Not just other people. Okay, snack. No, you already had dinner. No. A snack. She really wants a snack. Please. Fine. Yes. Summer Fine. Yes. Kids, it's live. I'm sorry. This is life. But, um, you know, I take that back. I'm not sorry. It's mom life. <laughs> um, going back to expre expressing creativity, uh, I totally lost my train of thought. This little girl, just she was cute, and she was saying, please. It got me. <laughs> what was that? You broke up a little bit. Having, talking about entrepreneurs having to have a, some creative backbone. That's right. Okay, cool. So um, thank you, Jamie. Entrepreneurs definitely have to have a creative backbone, and it's funny because you can you can trigger this in other people because usually what gets people about working a job that they don't like is that they don't have any say over anything and they would do things differently here or there and those are little tiny expressions of creativity um it's funny because i see it in my mom a lot where she, she works at a bank and so she comes home, sometimes she comes home and she's like you know furious over these rules that don't make sense and She's like, I would just do it this way and bypass this. And, and it's, for me, I understand her frustration because that's her creativity coming out and trying to provide a solution or, um, in, her, in her opinion, a better solution, which I, I kind of have to agree most of the time. But create the need to express creativity, unless you are the most boring black and white person ever on the planet, like your favorite color is I don't know, shipping box brown. <laughs> I mean, not to pick on anybody who that might be their favorite color, but I'm just saying that that need is there, but especially so in, in entrepreneurs. That's why we thrive in this environment, especially network marketing, where there are so many different avenues to pursue, so many different puzzle pieces that you can flip and change and, and make your own. It's like permission to color outside the lines. And for somebody who doesn't have it, it's even more important when you're talking to somebody who maybe, maybe they're already an entrepreneur. Maybe they're already there. And they're like, you know, I don't know. This is hard. And, you know, I'm still having to work my job to support this until it takes off. I just don't know what I want. Maybe I'm just going to go back to corporate world where, 
you know, I don't have to worry about any of this. Well, yeah, you don't have to worry about it, but you don't have a say in it either. That's the whole thing. You don't, you don't get to raise your hand at the board meeting and say, actually, no, you're not there. All those decisions are made without you, you know, and that, that really, you know, leads into more triggers. Um, even some of the ones that I'm going to cover here in a minute, but the need to express creativity takes various forms, whether it's a literal artistic expression of, you know, canvas and a paint, you know, or it's something more along the lines of being able to form and develop your own business. What's wrong? I got my Star Wars snack. Oh my gosh, we're taking a trip, guys. So, <laughs> you guys get to tour my messy kitchen. I'm sorry. But creativity, it's, it's there, it's in us all, and it's a very real need. Ow! I'm stepping on a monster. <laughs> we just needed a Star Wars snack, guys. What do you mean you're hey, hungry? You just ate. You gotta have them Star Wars snack. They're yeah, important. I know. You have one to Jacob. Come on. Jacob. You have it. Go take that to Jacob. Oh, hey, I'm I'm working. Can you please go to your room? Thank you. <sighs> Star Wars. <laughs> Who knew Star Wars gummies were that much of an issue? I know. I mean, me and Jason watched Paw Patrol and uh, SpongeBob all day, and I got my Phillips Paw Patrol and SpongeBob all day. So. <laughs> Right now, Rosie is watching the Lorax in this living room, and then the boys are in their room, and they're, what are they watching? I think the Bee movie. I'm just like, all right, Star Wars snacks it is. Let's do this. <laughs> kids, man. Kids. Um, Jamie, did you want to add anything on to this, or um, do you want to move on to the next one? Oh, I mean, the emotional trigger for expressing creativity comes easy to some people, you know, especially like me, I work in the engineering field, you know, I, I use uh, CAD software to, to draw, you know, highways, subdivisions, stuff like that. So when I went to school, I had to take art and, you know, I had to be able to draw stuff, three dimensions and stuff like that in art class to be able to transport, transfer it over into engineering and be able to draw. So the, the creativity come easy for me when I switched over to marketing because I was able to create banners and stuff like that, and, you know, create images really good. You know, I still get mad at Photoshop. You know, it's funny when you start learning a new software, how you scream at it and yell at it and it still won't do what you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's me with my computer every day. <laughs> I'm like, just work. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and then, like I was saying, you can use these to trigger yourself. Um, for me, I know the expression of creativity is a major trigger and the thought of going back to a space like I at one point I did work for a retail company who shall remain unnamed but it was like the retail version of office space where I would literally go in fold clothes clean up mess I'd have like five different bosses telling me to do something different and it was just miserable because I had no control over it. And then on top of it, I wasn't getting paid, you know, nearly enough to provide for my kids. And at the time, I only had two. So I say only, but they are twins. So to be fair, it's a lot at once. <laughs> um, you know, the thought of going back to that where I put on the same shirt every day and the same pants every day or you know the same color pants and color shirt and somebody's telling me what to do and what to wear and um, don't let your tattoos show and you know cover this and make sure you know your presentable smile all the time and even though you're miserable folding laundry and you know somebody's being catty and they're talking about drama and you want none of it and you have to listen and there's the boss again and it's a repetitive cycle and then you're told you know okay go to break but only for this much and Oh, go to lunch and only for this month. And, you know, you can only vacuum down so much food before you're sick. <laughs> and you're just done. <laughs> you're going to have the healthiest meal prepared. 
but you still have to vacuum it down and it hurts. <laughs> I don't miss that. I don't miss that at all, you know, and I set my alarm still every day. I'm sorry for all of you guys who are like, you shouldn't need an alarm to wake up every morning and your purpose should drive you. I'm like, my purpose drives me to stay up way too late, so I need the alarm. <laughs> I'm not naturally a morning person. Because well, you got you to get kids on the bus and everything in the morning, so you have to have an alarm to get up to get them on the bus. So. Yes, and I've, I've done plenty of 4 a.m. nights and woken up at 5.30 you know, an hour and a half later, and I'm like, I regret that so much. <laughs> but it was just there. I had to burn that out, and um, you know, whatever. It's usually content that keeps me up. <laughs> um, you have to run with it. So let's move on to another one. Um, okay, this this kind of segues. This emotional trigger piques a lot of curiosity. I won't say that it is one of the insatiable, like, as soon as it's triggered, I got to act now. But it is definitely a great way to peak curiosity. And this one is work less, the ability to work less. And of course, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a little time to that and, and still make good money. Because everybody's like, oh, I could work less, but I just won't make as much. Well, that that defeats the purpose. So <laughs> work less and be able to make as much money um, or more, pot and potentially more. There's a lot of great opportunities out there, um, especially if you're looking into developing your own products and your own services and stuff like that. But that's that's a, a whole other discussion. Anyway, let's go back to work less. Um, there's a lot to be said here just because Work less can mean a lot of things. Work less can mean literally put in less hours. You know, if you're talking to somebody who's working an 80-hour week, they are really ready to work less. You know, I remember those weeks of working in sales offices of, you know, over 60 hours, between 60 and 80 hours. I literally only had Sundays off. And, um, you know, great, I get to spend a whole day with my kids. And I really wouldn't see them during the week. And that that was awful. That was awful, especially as a single parent. That really eats you alive. Um, you know, for me as a single parent, I always feel, and I know it's undue pressure on myself, but um, I've always been a very driven person. So I always feel the need to make up for the absence. So I'm always like, oh, I've got to be twice the parent and show up twice as much. And, and that's why working from home means so much to me. The ability to work from home and make money and be with my kids and not, you know, put them in daycare or not see them or not be the one who's who's teaching them their morals and their compass and, and everything like that. That's why working less means more to me. Um, for a lot of people, working so many hours, one, it's horrible for your mental health. It's horrible for your physical health, the, the stress alone of working so many hours and not taking care of yourself because inevitably something slips, especially if you have a family your nutrition, your diet, your exercise, that's going to go out the window in an 80-hour week. Nobody's going to keep up with that. And if you are, then you're not sleeping, and that's still terrible. So um, working less. Guys, what about working less for somebody else? What if you could work less for somebody else and more for yourself? That means a lot to a lot of people, too. I mean, especially if you hate your boss. Like, if you're that guy from, the, what's that movie, Minority Report, where he's like, I want, he, like, goes to that dream center where they, they make all those fantasies. Like, they, they plug you into that little virtual reality thing, and he's like, I want to kill my boss. <laughs> if that's you, working less definitely means a lot. But this is the thing. When you're trying to trigger yourself, Working less, really sitting down, and you don't need but a few minutes to do this, really sitting down and focusing and saying, you know what, I don't want to work 40 to 80 hours for somebody else. I don't want to work 40 to 80 hours a week, period. I want to work, you know, maybe 20 a week and get paid like I'm working 80 to 100 sitting down and really having that visualization and visualization has a really fluffy 
context these days. I mean visualizing. Like, what would you do if you could sit at home and sleep in? Instead of getting up when your alarm goes off at 5.15, 5 5.30, 6 o'clock, whatever, what if you could just not set the alarm? Like, think about going to bed and not setting the alarm. How cool would that be? I mean, for me, I have to get my kids up, so I'll, I'll be setting my alarm in. <laughs> but, you know, summer's right around the corner. I work from home today, and I was still awake at 5.30, so. No, you're just progress. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you're talking about working less, you know, and I need to do that because I just sit here and figured up, um, not last week, but the last two weeks before last week, I had a 92 hour work week, you know, two week pay period. I had 92 hours plus 30 hours for those two weeks on the road, plus 50 hours in my home business, plus 10 hours on the workshop, you know. Oh two five-hour workshops. So I had 182 hours in two weeks. So I need that is a lot close. of hours. <laughs> <laughs> see, and when you have your own business, you can scale like that, though. You can see where you're, especially when you have metrics. Like, and I know you have metrics out the wazoo. So I know you can go back and see where all this is and just kind of see, okay, you know what? This is working really well. When I do this, it's working really well. If I post here, it's doing this. You can see where you're getting your results from, and then you can scale. And you can say, oh, this didn't work out so much, so I'm going to scale back here. Or, you know, uh, when, I, when I do this, I'm not getting as much of a result, so I'm going to take back those hours, and I'm going to concentrate my effort over here where I am getting more results. So working less is, is a great... Thing. Like if I was going to put together a webinar on time management, I would definitely say work less. <laughs> you know, if I want to trigger somebody into my home based business, I'm going to say work less. Enjoy the time with your family. Enjoy the time with your hobbies or your kids or, you know, whatever it is that you're wanting to do, traveling, having adventures. Uh, that's another emotional trigger, by the way, seeking adventures, the ability to have adventures um, or an adventurous lifestyle for all you adrenaline junkies out there. Um, hopefully it's not too loud. The kids are coming in, so <laughs> there's some background noise. Um, They're fine. So... Okay, uh, relieve boredom. This is another one. Relieve boredom. Now, I, I kind of touched on this. Like, like I said, a lot of these feed into each other. But um, I kind of touched on this with my, my former work experience. You know, you do get bored when you live that same routine every day. It is so easy to get bored. Jamie, I don't know how you haven't gone postal driving three hours a day. <laughs> I've been doing it for 18 I've done it for 18 years, you know, so it's it's habit now. So I I probably would have gone postal in like the first 18 days. <laughs> Maybe I'm just a lot short tempered, a lot more short tempered. But, okay, thank you. Dave says hi. Hi Dave. And Joe Whistler says hi and uh Katie and Pop says hi. Katie and, and uh, Katie says uh, you should sleep in, but you'll find that things still need to get done. So you'll have to find that you still set an alarm, but you can rename it to the opportunity clock. I like that. The opportunity clock. That's nice. So if it goes off, does that mean opportunity is knocking? <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So really boredom. Here we go. One of the things that I like most about this space is that you don't have the same day twice. In fact, it's usually why uh, my favorite jobs were my favorite jobs. When I was an esthetician, even though I performed the same services, uh, they were in different quantities, different clients, different little twists and tricks here and turns and all that good stuff. So it, it's very similar in the network marketing space or, um, you know, with my consulting business where even though people come to me a lot of the time with the same problem, 
it's still a very different um, path for everybody that they have to take. So it takes maneuvering. It takes um, tweaking here and there. And, and you never have the same conversation. Even if it's the same problem, it's never for the same reason. So having that, that sense of not just purpose, but just having a different day every day is phenomenal to me. And then I get on these where I get to come hang out with Jamie or, um, and we go over a different topic all the time, or, you know, my, my webcast with my partner, Victoria, where we go over different things all the time and there's interjections and all that good stuff. It's just relieving boredom. Imagine the cubicle where you're sitting at the same post-it note that you have a deadline or that you have a quota. Um, so, um, hold on a second. I can take it for a minute. You know, so, you know, talking about boredom, you know, I do the same repetitive thing every day, you know. I either just, I'm either working on a flat, you know, a subdivision or a highway. And it's the same thing every day. Yeah, no two lots or no two highways or no two subdivisions are the same. So I get a variety of of different looks of stuff, but I'm still doing the same repetitive stuff every day. You know, and the IT, I do too, you know, so that relieves some of the boredom. So I'm not doing the same thing every day because all of you that are have an IT background or, or have a technical background, you know that nothing ever happens like it's supposed to in the technical field. You know, there's always a changing, there's always something new and there's always a surprise for you, you know? So that's, that's why I started looking at marketing because, you know, I'm doing the same redundant things every day, drawing lines on a computer, you know, and it's, I started out on the drafting board, you know, drawing lines on a drafting board. Then I switched over to a computer, still the same redundant thing. And I've done it for 18 years and, you know, I'm good at it, but I'm tired of it too. So, yeah. And see, when you get used to doing the same things over and over, even if it's not, even if there are minute differences on the daily routine, it's still the daily routine. You know, you don't have, you have, oh, it's Monday, it's Tuesday, it's Wednesday, it's Thursday, it's Friday, I go to work, blah, blah, blah. You know, I do this or I do that. You know, you have your schedule. Whereas when you have the freedom to, change that where you can wake up, not set your alarm, wake up and say, what day is it? Oh, it's Wednesday. Maybe I should go skydiving today. Or I don't know, maybe I should check out flights to the Bahamas or, you know, I've always wanted to go to Ireland. Maybe, maybe I should look at that. You know, there's, there's a freedom there. There's an actual lifestyle to be pursued, you know, as opposed to having the same daily routine, day in, day out, year in, year out, where it's kind of like you go through a year and you're like, where did this year go? And you don't really have an answer because it's gone the same place it's gone for the last several years. So that, that boredom weighs in on people. And if you're that person who's stifled in your environment easily, it's a good way to trigger yourself too is to say, if you're feeling unmotivated and you feel stifled, you know what? I'm going to play up my emotions here and say, okay, look, I've always wanted to take this, this trip here. I've always wanted to do this thing or, you know, go cliff diving, go scuba diving or something, you know, what, whatever your, your thing is, whatever your little X factor is really sit in that moment. And again, it's a lot of visualization because it all starts in the mind. So when you have that moment where you can actually make your brain feel what it would be like to actually do it, you'll find an, a renewed sense of purpose and a renewed, tr you've triggered yourself. You know, you, you renew that emotion and, it, and it, it rekindles the fire. Let me go on. Um, we'll go into this one because it segues really nice. Seek adventure. Um, what is the adventure? Is it is it an actual adventure where you go backpacking through foreign countries or is it, you know, doing that one thing you've always wanted to do and at least be able to say you've done it once or twice or 
you know, that you do it on a regular basis, whatever it is. Um, I, I know people who like to go skydiving because to them it was so scary and made them feel more alive than anything. And it was a completely different mind warp. Now, as somebody who's pretty afraid of heights, I'm not going to lie, I actually have one of those people who has like a panic attack looking out of a high building in the window, and I'm like, okay, no, we're good. We're good. I'm going to stay over here. That's actually something I really want to do. Um, one, not to not only break that fear, but two, I just, the rush of feeling so alive for that, however long it is, a, you know, a couple seconds, it can't be more than a minute, right, or a couple minutes or you're just free falling. Um, that sounds incredible. That sounds amazing. Um, what What is the, the alternate adventure? Is it maybe you're single and you haven't settled down, but you want the family. Is that your new adventure where that's what you really want? That's, that's the ultimate adventure for you is to have the family. That's Honestly, there are those adventures that involve other people. And I'm not going to lie, as a single parent, it's such a challenge. But at the same time, I just, I can't imagine life without my minions. Like, I have my own personal SWAT team that would, you know, just come through the crap out of anybody. You want burger fries? No, I don't want burger fries. Thank you. Please. No. Uh, hold on. I got to show you guys this. Look at this. Hi. Say please. Hi. I got colors. You got colors. Colors. <laughs> I don't know why she calls that nightgown colors, but she does. <laughs> there's a there's just a lot to whatever adventure it is that you're seeking. You know, I mean, if you really not you don't want to have the same day with kids, that's one way to do it. I mean, have kids and you'll you'll never have the same day. You'll tear your hair out some days, but. <laughs> So that's what happened. Yeah, well, I mean, me and my wife had seven together, but we only we raised five of the seven, and you see the result. <laughs> you should see. You know, I have my hair down a lot for a reason. It's like all like going gray in here, like lightning streaks of wisdom. <laughs> you no, know, I wouldn't trade trade any of them for anything in the world. You know, and I've got uh, I think six grandkids now, and I just found out I got number seven on the way. What? Are we excited or are we, are we, we're just like, I, I don't know, after seven, it's only. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of them's got, this, this will be her third one. So she's got two boys. She's wanting a girl. No, she doesn't. <laughs> yeah. So she's the only one that has more than one. So the rest of them only have one. So, you know, anytime any of my friends are disappointed that they're having a boy, I'm like, trust me. You'll be so grateful later, especially if you try and you have a girl. Yeah, you'll be grateful for this boy. <laughs> my daughter, I love her to pieces, but she's a pill. Oh my god, my boys are so much easier, and they were twins. Yeah, Katie says. Katie says that's why she don't wear heels. She's afraid of heights. <laughs> yeah, Katie, I love you. <laughs> afraid of heights, Katie. You can't be that much taller. Hold on a second. How, if you wear heels and you're like six feet, then I could see, you know, being afraid of heights. Or maybe she's just accustomed to being so low to the ground. Although I shouldn't say anything. I'm shorter than Katie is. Okay, let's segue over to be successful. How before you do, I got something on the uh, uh, Seek Adventure, you know. Go for it. Last Last year in August, you know, we just started, you know, in the company we're with and in May, you know, and we didn't really, we'd had this trip already planned. So me and my wife wanted to go see South Dakota. We wanted to go see the Badlands and uh, see Mount Rushmore. So um, instead of going to live the dream, we went to see the Badlands and Mount Rushmore and Custer State Park. And we just took off on a whim, you know, on a Friday night and our anniversary was that Saturday. So we drove all night Saturday, Friday night into Saturday morning, you know, and I was planned on stopping and giving her, you know, a good dinner. And it got so late. We were driving so long. The best place I could find was a Burger King. And yes. that's, I know it was a Dairy Queen. 
And uh, that's what she got for her anniversary dinner. And she, she wasn't really worried about it because she said, you know, we're out seeing something we'd never seen, taking an adventure we'd never done and seeing things we'd never seen. So she wasn't really worried about it. She was just enjoying the moment being with me and getting to see something. Yeah. See, and that's one of the coolest things. Like anytime anyone invites me somewhere where it's like something somewhere I've never been, that's one of my, my things is like, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely there. I've never been like, it could be a hole in the wall where there's just a really good burger and I've never been. And yeah, I want to go even more cause I've never been. Right. But I mean, just think about that. There's so many experiences to be had that you've just never had before. Especially if you, um, you know, you come from a financial, you know, situation that didn't allow for it. I mean, just think about, you know, if you can't dream about big dreams, like, you know, backpacking through a foreign country or something like that, or, you know, taking, driving cross country or, or whatever, think about having a lifestyle where you have the freedom to just do what you want when you want. Like, oh, you know what? Today I kind of feel like going out to eat. I don't really want to cook. And I know that sounds trivial, but to somebody who doesn't have it, again, it's freedom. <sighs> so what did I say was next? You were going to segue into satisfy ambitions. Was I? Yeah. Well, let's go there. Why not? <laughs> Um, okay, satisfying ambitions. I personally really, really like this one because as a pretty driven person, when you just feel like the fr when you don't have anything to work on or when you're kind of set in your way or set in your job or life or your routine or whatever and you still feel frustrated, like you're just not satisfied, it's because your ambition is not being met. You have this internal little furnace, if you will, and it never shuts off. It just doesn't. It's not meant to be shut off. And this, again, plays into the ego where you have a need to be worthy, worthy and worth something. And it's usually met when you satisfy your ambition. When you are a very driven person, that furnace is constantly lit and you can see and hear the roar of the fire. So to not put that to use is like a very slow death. <laughs> it's very, very painful. Um, you know, for me, when I was going through uh, my phase of unemployment and sitting here, you know, with my kids and just thinking like, man, I should be doing something. I can do so much. And that's another thing you think is, man, I could do better or I could do more. I should be doing more. You know, somebody my age should be more successful or what have you. There's, there's various ways you can put it, but to finally satisfy the ambition, like I said, it's not that it goes out. It's just that you've gained ground. You've gained ground. You've gained confidence. You've gained a sense of worthiness, and again, your fulfilling purpose. This all goes back to fulfilling purpose. I don't believe we were sit, put here on this earth to just pay bills and die or pay bills and barely get by and be miserable and not. There are so many things to learn about on this planet. It is impossible to learn them all and just... I, just, I find it impossible that we would be put here to not do more than just work and die. Work and die. Work, breed, and die. <laughs> you know, like perpetuating this cycle. I think at some point you're meant to step into more. I think at, at some point you have to decide when that is. And I know... Um, a lot of my older clients are, are at the point where they don't want to invest time into something new because how long is it going to take? And I don't know. But at the same time, the time is going to pass anyways. So you might as well invest it into something that's going to satisfy you and satisfy that drive to do more. Because at the end of days, when you're sitting there and you're thinking, man, sure glad I played it safe. 
now I have all these regrets. I mean, <laughs> that's not, no, <laughs> that's not enough. And it's never going to be enough because even when you play it safe and you're thinking that it's, it's going to be great and you're going to do okay, everything will be okay. There's a reason that's called okay and it's not called great. And we're meant for so much more. So. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And I say, I say that all the time, you know, you were put here for a greater purpose and you just need to find that purpose. For sure. I mean, everybody's purpose varies. Everybody has a different purpose. I mean, even if you're on the same path, you know, partnered up with somebody who's going the same direction, your point, your your destination point will be different. Really? I am not a jungle gym. If you are. No, I'm positive that's on the mommy handbook. <laughs> There's like a user guide somewhere, I'm sure. Mommies are not playgrounds. I see this. Okay, so, <laughs> hey, if you're going to be here, you got to settle down, okay? <laughs> so, that brings us into... Hi! Hey, if you're going to be... I am fine. Down. How are you? <laughs> I clicked away from the screen. Now she can't see you, so she's confused. <laughs> okay, let's talk about... Nope, don't press. Um, I'll press. Don't press. Okay, let's talk about success. Be successful. The ability to be successful or to gain success is, I believe, our final trigger that we're going over tonight. Hey, cut it out. Cut it out. Okay, you're fired. Fired. Okay, poopoo. Okay, success. Um, everybody defines this differently. For some people, it can mean, you know, houses across the globe and cars to fill, you know, 15 car garages in each and every one of them. Um, for some people, it means, you know, the ability to pick up and go and just do whatever you want to do. Um, or maybe just provide that really comfortable lifestyle, that one that you really want for your family um, to be able to do things. I know recently... Pat Patterson was able to buy his wonderful wife a brand new BMW. And I sat there because he, he had uh, somebody videotape it, you know, or record it on their phone. And I thought the coolest part about it for me was it has to be incredible to be able to do that for somebody else. Not just for yourself. I mean, that has to be an incredible feeling too. Don't get me wrong. It's just to not only take care of yourself, but to do it for somebody else and not just like, Oh, here, I bought you a car so you can get from point A to point B here. I bought you a brand new, wonderful luxury vehicle because I care about you and I wanted to do something special. Like that blew my mind for a second. I watched that video like three times because <laughs> I was just sitting there like, that's awesome. That is awesome to be able to do that for somebody else you know and pat's a real cool guy I, I love that guy he's awesome but success no matter how you define it everybody wants to be successful they want to be able to say i am successful and mean it and know that they're they're not lying know that they've met the par to be successful however it is defined for them it's an insatiable need. And you know what? It's probably one of the best ways to trigger yourself. Because when you're running out of steam and you're wondering, dear God, why am I doing this? It's to be successful, to have that ego fed and to satisfy that ambition. It's all of it. It's to express the creativity. It's to relieve the boredom and have the adventures. It's all of it. It's all of it. And it all goes into your definition of success. That's why you're doing it. That's why I stay up till four in the morning on, on occasion, not as often as I was, <laughs> admittedly. But it's the driving force that want to be successful, that want to be worthy. 
That's the midnight oil people burn. And that's what gets people out of bed. Yeah, sure, my alarm wakes me up, but getting me out of bed and actually awake in the morning is that want to be successful. What do you got, Jamie? Yeah. I get up, don't mess with me till I get my coffee. I mean, you know, I'm awake the same time every day, but don't mess with me till I get my coffee. <laughs> Like, I'm not awake right now. You're going to have to wait until this coffee revives my soul. <laughs> I tell Katie that all the time. Katie's my witness. I'm like, hey, coffee's for the soul. It's not really for my brain. It's for my soul. <laughs> you know, what's funny is, you know, I, I'll, get up, I'll get up in the morning, get ready, get my coffee ready. And somebody, Dave will text me at 6.30 in the morning, you know, or 5.30, quarter to 6 in the morning. And I have to have my glasses to read. That's the only thing I need them for is to read. And I cannot see my phone in front of my face. So I'm in there in the morning trying to read, read this message that Dave sent me. And I'm like, I got to go find my glasses because I can't see it. <laughs> ah, see, and I've gotten smart. I put my glasses by my phone. <laughs> but, so that way I can read the messages that are usually waiting for me already. And I'm like, it's 5 o'clock in the morning. What are you people doing up? <laughs> but my definition of my success is to see one of my team members in the workshop warrior group or one of my personal team members have success with something I've taught them. That, that is my success to me. I, I feel successful when somebody does that because I feel that I've done a good job teaching them how to implement something correctly. You know what? I have something for you then because my mom was trying to print this PDF from her windows computer and she couldn't get it. I couldn't get it off that computer. It was driving us both insane. And then I finally got the idea. <laughs> this is genius for non-techie me. So I'm very proud of this. So I got the idea. It was like, email it to me. So I downloaded it onto my little Chromebook that usually gives me crap. <laughs> and it reformatted the PDF so I could print it. <laughs> yep. I was like, yes, I win. It was great. My techie's rubbing off on you. A little bit. It's getting there. <laughs> so happy. I was so proud of myself. <laughs> but really quick, I want to go through how to trigger these things. Um, uh, Jamie, I don't know if you saw, but on the bottom of the notes that I sent, there's a little bit um, right there. So let's go through how to trigger it in somebody else. Uh, again, if you've been on the Hangouts with me and Jamie, you know that I'm really big on prospecting and rapport building and building relationships. And that's really the only way that you're going to figure out how and what button to push. Um, have a conversation. Start asking questions. Get to know them. But the point that you're trying to make or get to is to discover the problem, um, whether it's not enough clients, not enough team members, not the income amount that they want. Um, Et cetera, et cetera, the list goes on, working too many hours, all of it. So you're going to figure out what their pain point is. And I know it's counterintuitive because we want to pet the ego and make them feel better, but that's not what we're trying to do. We're actually trying to push on that pain point and make them realize how big of a problem it actually is. So push that pain point um, by asking how things would be different if they didn't have that problem. A lot of us get so used to the white noise of having a problem that we tend to drown it out and it becomes less and less. It's kind of like um, the chiropractor, like when your back is out of alignment and you get like this little crank in your neck or down in your lower back and you just kind of deal with it and you don't, you um, pull back from certain activities because of it because you know it's going to aggravate that so you just deal with it, right? Well, it's the same with wine. So you go through and you ask them, you know, what if you didn't have that problem? What would you be able to do? What if you made that money? Like, what if you could make the extra two grand a month? How much would that change your life? Well, it would change my life a lot because I could do this and this and this with my kids. Cool. Now, and, and don't say cool, I'm just running through this, but I actually acknowledge what they're saying. Um, when they say, you know, they want to do things for other people or maybe they want to pay off some debt or some bills, Okay, now, how would, um, is that how you would spend your extra money? Is that how you would spend that? Okay, now, don't be afraid to move into authenticity from right here because 
you don't want to steamroll them. You don't want to just steamroll them into a process of jump on the train, jump on the train. You want to step down and and come to a, a level where you're authentic with them. Like, look, I understand completely because that's exactly what I wanted. And only say if, if it's true. But, um, you know, that's what I wanted. Or, you know, when I got started, this is why I started. I wasn't, you know, X, Y, and Z, and that's what I really wanted to be. Or I wanted to make, you know, 10 grand a month. And, you know, that's where my goals were at the time. And um, it, it could really help me out. And so I know the pain of, you know, being in debt or, Maybe they're going through a foreclosure or you know, you don't know what somebody's situation is unless you ask. And when you find that pain point, keep hitting it. Keep hitting it. So, you know, relate to them how you had a similar problem or the same problem. And then hit them with a reality check. Hit the pain point with a reality check and say, what will happen if you don't? If you don't come up with that money, what if your team doesn't grow? What if you don't do those things with your kids that you really want to do? Don't answer that question for them. Let them sit in silence. Let them really think about it. Grow a beard. Don't answer it for them. Let them answer with, their their honesty whether it's like I you know a lot of times they'll deflect and say I don't know and say look I can tell you what's gonna happen nothing is gonna change if you don't do these things with your kids you're gonna miss out on making the memories if you don't make that income you're gonna get further in debt if you don't make you know the thousand dollars to to pay off your bills or you know the th 30 grand to pay off your credit card debt it's just gonna keep rolling and you're gonna get further and further and soon it's gonna be like quicksand where you're drowning it seems harsh, but that's reality. So present the solution. Look, I know a way to do this. I know how to get from where you are to where you want to be. Because if nothing changes, nothing changes. So what do you really have to lose? And when they say like, oh, well, you know, it's a lot of money for coaching or it's a lot of money for this system or this product or this service, is the risk of losing whatever dollar amount, worse than not meeting your goal. Is the risk of losing, if, it, if let's say you're doing a coaching program that's you know $500 a month, okay, is the risk of losing $500 a month worse than not meeting your goal? You want to be very honest because if you keep babying their ego and saying, yeah, I understand, no problem, they're getting that from everywhere, and you're not really helping them. You're not. So don't babysit them. Don't handhold them. Be brutally honest because that's life. Life is brutally honest. So now you create an urgency. What do we need to do forward? move forward? Um, how far away from X are you? Like if, if you're doing – let's go with the coaching thing. If you're running a coaching program that's $500 a month, and they say, oh, well, I don't know if I have that kind of money – Okay, well, how far away from you are it? Are you? How far away from it are you? Sorry, tongue tied. What do you need to do to get the rest of the money? What do you need? You know, how much longer? How much time? Um, how can I help you uh, get to a financial goal? Like, what are some things that you need to do in your business to get to this income? Um, pre keep presenting solutions. Be solution oriented. You've hit a lot of pain points. And they're hurting. By now, they're hurting. So keep being solution-oriented. Okay, let's go ahead. If they say, I need, you know, two weeks, I need a month. Okay, I'm going to say, let's, let's go with the month. I need a month to come up with this money. Okay, I'm going to follow up with you in two weeks just to make sure you're still on track, make sure that you, you have everything you need, and see if I can help you out in the meantime. Um, but in a month, I'm going to follow up again, and we're going to go from there. So let's, we're going to be ready to move on from there. You want them to get the sense of urgency that they have a deadline to meet. Um, if they already have everything ready, like if they have financial resources available, okay, let's move forward. So I can bring you into my team and start setting up your new business plan right now. No more hesitations. Everybody's so afraid to ask for 
you know, the sell or the close or to actually move forward. And they're going to wait for the other person to say, yeah, let's do this. When that other person is hurting and they're limping and they need your help. So <laughs> step in and help them. That's what I got for you guys. <laughs> Maria has a question. Yes, I knew it. <laughs> what do you do when you have a bad day and you don't feel that positive? This may be counterintuitive to some, but if I have a bad day and I don't feel positive, I think about how much worse it can get if I just stop. If I just stopped, I closed my computer, I shut down my accounts, I stopped moving, and I stopped creating content, I threw my blog in the virtual trash can of the depths of the way back, and I did all that. How is my situation going to change? It will not. That's how. <laughs> it will not. It will not go anywhere. My kids will not have the things that I want to provide for them. And granted, they don't know what's rolling around in my head. But I know what's going on in my head. And when I'm not that positive, I don't invest. You don't invest when you're emotional. So if you're angry, if you're upset, you're just not in a positive state of being, you don't invest. You don't connect with people because your energy translates. I promise it does. Whether you realize it or not, Maybe you think it's not that bad of a day. I'm just going to keep going. No, don't. Don't invest in anybody. You're not in a place. Like if you're, if you're in a negative space, you're in a deficit. Nobody needs your deficit. You're only going to get further in the hole. So you stay where you are until you can bring yourself back. Does that make sense? So like when you're negative, you don't connect with somebody new and try to recruit them or, you know, rapport build with them because that, that deficit will be there. You wait until however long it is, and I, I suggest doing your utmost effort to make sure that you don't stay in that, that deficit. But like I said, I mean, I sit there and I, I worry about how much it's going to be, how much worse would it be? Because I mean, if I'm not working towards my goals, nobody else is either. If I'm not moving and producing, nobody else is either. You may be your own boss, but you're also your own employee. So that's the, that's the less glamorous side that nobody, nobody throws out there. Be your own boss. Yeah, but you're your own employee too. You know? So if I'm not positive, I think about how much worse it can get. If it doesn't work, if that does not work for you, um, Maybe you need to come back and, and hit a different trigger where it's like, okay, you know, I have this ambition or I have this goal or this is what I really want to do. Think about something where you can actually sit in for five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you got at the moment where you can sit there and really think about like, for me, I really want to go to Ireland. Like that's the first, you know, out of country experience that I really want or I should say cross Atlantic experience that I really want is to be in Ireland. So I want to know what those rolling seas of green look like. And that's where I sit. And I'm like, they're beautiful. The air is cold. It's a little windy, but it's gorgeously green. You have to get concrete. Your dreams don't become concrete in your head. They get concrete in your mind when you see them with your mind and your vision and you start putting it on paper. That's where they get concrete. So that's where you have to go. That was awesome. You know, I, I'm, I want to apologize. So we went over a little bit, but I felt this information was too important to stick it to, right, to an hour, you know, and cause I've had the notes all week, you know, and I've went over them a couple of times and uh, trying to figure out how I can use that in, and it's just like what I said, you know, you just start using it and talk, asking people questions and stuff. And that's when you're talking, carrying on conversations with people, hit the pain points. Everybody yeah. experienced pain and we all have a pain point. And if you can hit that pain point, you know, people are going to react. Yeah. And like you said, you only find it in conversations and you will see what's important to somebody else. You know, when they say that, you know, they're tired of their boring job and, 
then that's when you know you need to help them relieve their boredom. Or if they say, you know, I have all these big dreams, but I don't know what to do with them. You say, ambition. Let's satisfy that ambition, you know. Or uh, I really feel like I could do more if I was doing something else. You know that person really wants to be successful. There's so many different emotional triggers. So just listen. Really, really listen without intent. Uh, there's, there's the popular phrase of divorce the results and marry the process. Mm -hmm. This is one way to take it. Marry this process. Stop thinking about results. Think about the conversation. Listen. Yep, exactly. Maria says thank you for that. Was a great answer. So, you're welcome, Maria. So, I want to thank everybody that was in the chat. You know, Maria, Katie, and Pops, uh, uh, Carlene, and Dave Renica was in the chat there for a little while. Uh, Joe Whistler, uh, that's it. I think there were some other people on too that didn't log in and, and say anything, but that's okay. Uh, you know, uh, I want to thank all of you for hanging out with us. Uh, this good information. The replay will be up all week until next Thursday. And uh, make sure you check out Pastor Jackie tomorrow. And I think it's around lunchtime between 1230 and 1 o'clock. She Pastor Jackie show. I think she's still doing it. I'm not sure. And then, you know, uh, Saturday we have our workshop as normal. Uh, I'm leading the workshop this week, so I got to come up with something that I'm going to teach. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you need help, let me know. <laughs> sure. And then Monday night, you know, it's uh, Dave, Pops, and Katie, and myself on the 24-Hour Marketing Mastermind. Tuesday is Maria and Sonia in uh, Marketing Systems at Work. And uh, then Wednesday is Pat Patterson's Wisdom Wednesday, and then back here next Thursday night for the Jimmy Shaw Marketing Show. And uh, you said something about a topic uh, – that we could talk about next month. I can't remember what it was right off the top of my head. Uh, something about coaching or something. Oh, having like a, a coaching program, maybe? Yeah. I don't know. I th I'll think of it again. I mean, it's okay. We'll open up your brain and I'll just start with my little surgery tactics. <laughs> 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 but thank all of you for being here. Thanks all of you for being here. And come back next Thursday night and we'll see you all later. <laughs>